My name is Jeff Linderman. I'm an applications engineer for Go Engineer. Uh, I've been with Go Engineer a little over three years now. Um, I specialize in the SolidWorks plastics injection molding simulation add-in. I um, also specialize in mold design and using SolidWorks for mold tools. I'm an instructor for all of the SolidWorks packages as well. I come with 30 years experience in the injection molding industry, so I've pretty much been working in injection molding my entire life. So the topics I'm going to cover in this 30-minute webinar, um, we're going to look at sink marks in um, plastic parts, what we can do to avoid them um, and what causes them. And also we're going to look at SolidWorks plastic simulation software and some of the things that we can do with it that relate to sink marks as well. When we, when we look at the plastics flow analysis, we look, we're looking at the fill stage. So this is where the liquid resin, the melted resin, is forced into, into the cavity of the mold under a constant velocity. The fill stage is part of plastic standard, which I'll show you here in a minute. And it will allow you to see where sink marks will occur on the part. Um, plastics Professional has the packing stage. So the packing stage in the injection molding as the resin begins to cool, as it touches the walls of the mold, um, it causes the plastic to shrink. So to reduce shrinking, we add additional molten plastic, forcing it into the mold under a constant pressure after the fill stage is complete. So that's the fill and pack transition. Once we're in the packing stage, it continues until the plastic ceases to flow through the gate. So we're going to look at results in SOLIDWORKS plastics to see the effect of proper part design versus trying to adjust the packing phase to correct sink marks in a part. So with SOLIDWORKS Plastic, as in most simulation packages, we want to use it at as early in the design stage as we can for part design. So if we're analyzing a part design looking for sink marks, we definitely want to be using this early in the part design phase. Because the later we wait in the, in the process for your plastic part, the higher your cost of change is going to be. So if we catch it in the part design phase with the simulation and make our adjustments, then it's going to save us money down the road. So just a quick brief overview of the SOLIDWORKS plastic packages. Um, plastic standard covers just the fill stage of the injection molding. This was geared toward your part designers. It's going to let you know if your part's going to fill. You'll see the filling in short shots. It'll identify where you're going to have weld lines and air traps on your part. Um, and it'll identify seat marks. That's what we're concentrating on in this um, webinar. And then we can also look at multiple gates. So we can actually place multiple gates on a part. And then Plastics Professional has the packing stage. So once we run our analysis and look at our sink marks, we're going to go in utilizing Plastics Professional and make adjustments to the packing settings on our analysis. And I can show you some things that you can look at on that to help reduce sink as well. And then finally is Plastics Premium. This is the, the highest level. It's for full capability, doing a warping analysis and advanced cooling analysis. So you have the ability to actually analyze the complete mold design and water line layouts, um, even using conformal cooling and all of that. So when we talk about sink marks in a plastic part, what are they caused by? Thick wall sections, that's the key thing. The most common area on a plastic part where you're going to have sink marks is when someone adds ribs into the design. So that's what we're going to concentrate on this. We're going to look at, at ribs and the rib design. The sink marks occur during our cooling process. So once the filling stage happens, it starts cooling, you're going to start getting sink marks. It'll continue to develop sink marks after the part even comes out of the mold. We can utilize the simulation. So we're going to utilize SOLIDWORKS plastics to predict where our sink mark areas are going to be. And then we'll also look at making corrections to the sink mark by adjusting the packing phase of the analysis. So we're going to see that we can adjust the packing phase and have an effect on the sink. But I'm going to show that it would actually be better to require a part design change utilizing the proper rib design methods on the part. 
So the, the key factor in designing a plastic part is maintaining uniform wall thickness. So when we maintain a uniform wall thickness, we're going to have more even material flow during the injection portion of the molding cycle. And it'll also promote uniform cooling, minimizing warp, twist, and feature distortion. So we want to focus on uniform cooling. If we design a rib that is not properly designed, you're not going to have uniform cooling through your mold, and that's going to re result in sink marks. So there's some basic rib design guidelines. If ribs not designed correctly in relation to the surface that they're attached, um, a sink mark can occur. So what we're trying to do is reduce the cross section of the, the rib where it's attached to the wall. So the first thing we want to look at is our base thickness of the rib should be between uh, 60 to 75 percent of our parent wall thickness. So that's the, the base thickness of, of the part. So we're looking at this base thickness. Next, we're going to look at our rib height. Make sure our rib height is no more than three times the nominal wall thickness. Once you get your rib a certain height, you start adjusting it. If you add draft to it, then your base thickness starts getting wider and wider. So you want to try to make sure that you're not any, any higher than three times that. We should add one and a half to two degrees of draft per inch of rib length. Your rib base radii should be 0.25 times your nominal wall thickness. So you want to make sure it's a quarter of that. And then your distance between ribs, if you're putting multiple ribs, should be two to three times the nominal wall as well. So when we look at our rib, obviously when you get a really tall high rib with draft added, it's going to be thicker at the, at the bottom of the part. So that's going to give us a, a heavier cross section. It's going to retain heat and it'll allow more ability to sink in the part. So we want to try to make our ribs smaller. It may even help to add more ribs with less thickness. Um, but we want to make sure that our thinner rib cross-section cools faster and we have less sink marks. And I've got a model set up. If we look at this model, I'll do a section view on it. And we can see our rib cross-section on this in this area. So this is what I'm going to concentrate on the ribs on this part. And we're going to look at the results of the sink mark analysis from this. So SOLIDWORKS Plastics being an add-in in SOLIDWORKS, we're able to work directly in the feature tree. You saw me switch just from the model. Now I'm back over into Plastics now. So I have the ability to go in and do all my setup in Plastics. If you haven't seen the interface for Plastics, uh, we've got domain set up. So with a single cavity or a single body part, we have this is going to be our cavity automatically. We can set injection locations as a boundary condition. So on this one, I have a gate modeled on there as well. And then we have different meshing capabilities. So we can mesh with a solid mesh or a shell mesh as well. I'm not going to go deep into the meshing process, but any simulation package that you run, you're going to have to mesh the model. And we can go through and set up the mesh. The mesh refinements in SOLIDWORKS Classics are really um, powerful. I like those quite a lot. And then we assign a material to it. So I've, I've got a C, an ABS PC blend that I've selected for this. The material library in SOLIDWORKS Plastics is right now over 4,000 different materials and it will um, actually be increasing. The SOLIDWORKS technical team right now is actually working with material manufacturers to increase that. So after you've got all those settings set, we've set our injection location, our boundary conditions, all of those things, we can run the analysis. So on this model, we're looking at the sync mark results for, for the original rib design that we have. So this is a rib design that is not properly done. So if we look at the measure tool inside of SOLIDWORKS Classics, we have the ability to actually select a section on the rib. So I'm selecting one section and then outside of it, and it kind of gives me a, a resultant difference. So this is an estimate of the, the depth of the sink mark in that area on my model. 
So utilizing that poor cross section, we're looking at that. So there's some other things that I like to look at when I'm looking at sink marks, and that's volumetric shrinkage. So that's part of the packing phase inside of Plastics Professional. So if I look at my volumetric shrinkage in that area inside my rib, I can see the resultant shrinkage and the difference between the shrinkage in the main wall of my part here and the, the internal section of my rib, I see I have a, a lot higher volumetric shrinkage on the inter internal part of my rib. So this is going to indicate also non-uniform shrinkage. It's going to give us more sink mark in that area as well. In my fill settings or my packing settings, I can go into my pack settings in here and increase my pressure holding time. So the original pressure holding time on this model was three seconds. I went in, increased my pressure holding time, I doubled it, made it six seconds. So during the filling stage, then we're going to get additional pressure holding time for basically three more seconds than what we originally had. So it's going to be packing out more. And we're going to look at the volumetric shrinkage at the end of packing with the additional pack phase or the additional packing time added. So now that we see we've got our volumetric shrinkage with additional packing, we're shrinking less inside the part here in, in these areas. So we've actually reduced the amount of volumetric shrinkage. It's going to help reduce the amount of shrink that we get there as well. So once I've looked at that, I've done increased my packing phase. I can go back into SolidWorks Plastics and now we, we want to look at changing my part model and fixing the rib design utilizing my rib design guidelines. So the easy thing to do inside of SolidWorks Plastics is to duplicate my study. And what this does is make a copy of this study that I currently have. And when I do that, it actually creates a new configuration inside my part form. So once I have created this new configuration, I can actually alter, just as in any other SOLIDWORKS configurations, I can go in and edit my part. Let me get back to the section view again. And then I can edit that rib and fix the rib cross-section radii all of those things to, to meet the design guidelines that we're using here. So once I've done that, I can go through and rerun my analysis. I've got the pack settings set back to the original 3.04 seconds that the original ones had. So I reduced the pack from that other one. I don't need to overpack it now that I've got my rib designed properly. Um, I can go in and read my flow results. And we have the ability with the solid mesh, we can actually watch the flow go all the way through it. Um, and we can also look at other things in the model, such as cooling time. So we can see cooling time differences, how long it takes the part to cool. And then we can look at sink marks. So we've got different sink mark profile in this. We've got less sink marks in the areas of the ribs that we were looking at. Using the measure tool again, our resultant difference now with the uh, new rib design with the measuring in the same point, we've actually changed our resulting difference. So we've actually got a whole lot less sink mark in this area. Um, I can also look at the volumetric shrinkage of it now and the difference in my volumetric shrinkage in those areas is less than it was in either one of the, the previous two analysis. So we reduced that, but we did not have to increase the packing. So when we go one step further, notice I wasn't showing the sink mark result after the packing phase. The sink mark result is part of the, the filling phase. So to see any kind of effect on the sink mark profile after packing, I would need to have Plastics Premium where I can utilize the sink mark profile result. 
So this, once again, gives us the same measure tool. It gives us a little different preview than what the, the filling phase. The filling phase is giving you a more of a predicted sink mark in a certain area. The sink mark profile gives you more of the result after it comes out of the mold. It sits and cools outside in to ambient temperature. And then you can use the measure tool to get a more accurate result of the depth of the sink marks and things like that. So on these models, I, I went through, did that for each one of the different settings. So my original rib design with the packing set at the, the 3.04 seconds, um, my cycle time estimate for that part was 11.5 seconds. The mass of that part was 108.81 grams. Run the same analysis with the sink mark profile results in to plastics premium. With the added packing time, my cycle estimate is bumping up to 14.7 seconds. My mass is still the 108.81 grams. And then when I go in back to my new rib design, cycle time of 11.2 seconds. So there's less cooling time because I have thinner rib sections. Um, my cycle time drops and my mass is also dropped because there's less material in the rib. So not only am I saving cycle time, I'm also saving on material costs, which is also going to reduce the cost of my part um, cycle wise and also in materials as well. That ends this recorded webinar on SolidWorks Plastics and how to utilize it along with proper plastic part design to reduce sink marks in your parts. Thank you. This has been Jeff Linderman with Go Engineer.